a particular value to a particular word or group doesn't necessarily mean that someone else wouldn't would interpret it that same way. So um, what we have here at this stage is nine prologue programs, some C programs, a big IntelliCAD uh, uh, situation that's run by an auto list program, and then I sit down and drill into all of these words with this lexicon. Believe me, no one would ever want to run this as a recreational kind of a product. Well, see, what you've got to do is wrap all that up into a program that will run on Windows XP. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it, Eric. Well, I'm trying to think market here, you know. Yeah. And I figured you'd love it because um, uh, I can see which side of this you're on, and this, is, you know, so this is one way you really could do this. I mean, if you could sort of work this into a program that would would run, um, it would be real popular, and you would make money. Well, you 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 could actually use the technology in a little different way. You could you could build something that would scan all of your incoming emails and it would tell you what people really think about you because um, it's a lexical shift over time. Uh, well, you know, if I were to run that with my current email, uh, some pe people would um, uh, they would think that I'm uh, under deprived in my manhood. Because there'd be so many of those that would come through, you know, the patches and the lotions yeah. and the potions yeah, and all yeah. the rest of that. <laughs> so how do you I wonder how your bots, um, do they get affected by this horrible onslaught of um, crap that's on the Internet? We run into that. We used to run into that when we were using a different kind of intelligent agent because we were would occasionally end up sweeping through uh, batched email queues that were on specific servers. But since I've dropped that approach, with a, there was a, a sort of a sea change in the internet commercially uh, around the year 2000, and some of the old conventions that had been in existence since the ARPA days kind of fell by the wayside. Uh, along with the robots.txt, which is a file that a guy who runs a server could put up there that would say, in essence, robots stay away or robots can go and look at this area, etc. And that kind of convention went away. And since then, I have stopped using uh, spiders that skip from server to server to server in, in, a, in the main, to be honest, because I was picking up so much pollution. And, in oh. fact, we had in, indeed polluted our own event stream at one point. My. Yeah, what, what, what ends up happening are, is if you think of the Internet, uh, and if you're familiar with a spreadsheet, you know what a circular reference is? Sure. Okay. What, what ends up happening with the web bots is, is if we're running a web bot run and do a snapshot while the run is still out there, people would pick up things on my website uh, and like uh, the, the gold antitrust action coalition or, or antitrust Group Action committee, and yeah. has a bunch of, of discussions going on at places like La Metropole. And so pieces of my post about what the web bots are predicting show up at some of these financial sites. Uh. And then we go out and sweep that same stuff. Then, then, then we end up getting this, this feedback loop going. So we, we it, it, it's not the kind of thing that you can put out there on a, hey, today here's, here's uh, the update on the web bots. You, you you really need to... I see your problem, and your problem yeah. is uh, just like Princeton's problem. They are scared to death for understandable reasons of coming on the radio and talking about what they're doing for fear that it will affect the, uh, uh, the, the experiment, uh, their ongoing experiments. And I do understand that concern and fear, and that's why you don't hear a lot from them. They really are concerned about that. Uh, for you, it was a feedback problem. Uh, for them, since they, you know, it's science, they, you know, they're trying to keep their results pure. So coming on there and talking about it to millions of people could potentially pollute it. And right. I would and, not, and now, for instance, do a web bot run for some considerable time simply because we will pollute it just with the number of your listeners that will be discussing this online tomorrow. Well, in fact, you haven't done that many recent runs, correct? That's correct. Why? It's a matter of poverty, though. Po it's, it's poverty. Yes, yeah, so these are very expensive to do, and they're yes. extremely time-consuming. This would be a tool that a government could use uh, against terrorism, obviously, right? Correct. Yep. 
But is it refined enough? And that's probably why the CIA only put you in the let's keep watching these guys kind of this is interesting scenario, but we don't know yet type place. Yeah, I, I think I think we're at the point where we're, we've had uh, a lot of intellectual uh, gain from the project. We've had um, just like playing with radios is fun. Uh, playing with web bots is, is fun, but we don't know if we can really push the technology any further, uh, until somebody with very deep pockets steps up. Uh, uh, the reason for it is that, uh, you know, I'm, I've just wrapped up one job assignment in South Florida and I'm moving to my ranch in Texas, uh, on Tuesday and, and Cliff is, uh, be, he, you know, what do, what do you do after you in, invent Super speed reading and web bots, well, uh, and you're the prince of SQL. You're, look, uh, your best route to money is the route you were on originally. Your original motivation was to predict, predict the market. If you can make this a usable tool uh, in, 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 in the market, well, well, what problem? The nature of the markets themselves have changed, and we discovered this back in uh, June and July of 2001 focused on some of our financials. It's, for instance, I will be flat out and I will state that there is no point for anyone, in my opinion, and I'm stating this as an opinion, to involve themselves in, in any way shorting any market uh, that's under the control of the United States government or the Fed because they are indeed being controlled. <laughs> and therefore, why bother betting in that casino when you know the casino is rigged? Uh -huh. Well, uh, if you know how it's rigged, then you can short the right thing. And, That's not moral. Well, maybe not. Uh, what the hell is moral about economics? How much? No, but a person has to maintain their own integrity and morality regardless of the perfidity that they may see around them. Just because others are using the casino of the uh, stock markets to scam money and steal from the American people doesn't mean I have to participate. Ooh. Well, that's Sorry. A, that's I mean, a, I don't mean well, to be... No, I, I, look, I have no problem with such a stand... But after all, you guys did approach this from an economic point of view when you started. And before you ran into the larger picture, this was about making money. Now, Correct. And, it, and to that extent, it, it still is. But there was always that, that level of emotional or, or intellectual curiosity about it. And I was never going to use it in any immoral way to make money. Or on the other hand, Art, I've actually tried. <laughs> Why? Well, I can hear that in your voice, that you would have tried. And um, with what kind of results? I mean, you, you had good results with gold. Oh, yeah. Yeah, gold's been great. And and what, I mean, how else have you done? Well, uh, specifically, when, when we had the entities pointing to uh, the U.S. dollar becoming irrelevant, uh, and, and, and in other words, the Federal Reserve notes, becoming more or less irrelevant at the end of 2003, uh, I tried going short in a massive way with uh, put options on various indexes, and and what we expected would happen, uh, the fall of the dollar well, began right on schedule, but guess what? The market went up. Yes. But but why not just go ahead and bet on the falling dollar? I mean that that's something you had down. Why not? Bet? Well, in essence, by buying gold, you are betting on the falling. Well, dollar. Well, you're right. You are. Yes, I. That's and in true. fact, we have run some done some special runs for people where I was where I put the web bots back um, almost a year ago. I did a couple of runs for some European banks. And uh, they did very well as a result of following the advice that came out of it. Well, and you could have done even better. While you're right about buying gold, that's a, a sort of around-the-corner, very conservative way to bet into what your machine's telling you. Uh, a more direct way would be to simply get in the currency markets and uh, put lots of money on the falling dollar. And then you get... And, and that, that's correct, and this is a discussion that George and I have had repeatedly over the last year and a half or so because I have this rather stubborn streak in me, my dad coming from Missouri. I can hear it, yes. I, and I have this attitude that one must create value. It is not merely a matter of shoveling digits back and forth. If you do that, you don't necessarily create value for, any, for the universe as a whole. And so I don't find those things to be particularly. I find boy, I, I bet the two of you have had some roundhouse talks. Oh, you have no idea. 
Uh, Cliff is a vegetarian, and, and uh, until recently, I ate a lot of beef. Oh my God! <laughs> and, and, and yeah, but but you know, and that's what good collegial exchange is about. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, if, if Cliff comes out with something that I think is nuts, I don't have any problem telling him, and he'll tell me more than more often than not. Many of my ideas are kind of out there too. But all of that said, we're still both of us sitting back looking at the spread spectrum signal, yeah. kind of like contact, and going, huh, what can we do with this? Yeah, that's kind of like contact after Jody uh, got the signal. There yeah, wasn't exactly. The headphones. Yeah. Exactly. And we're, we're looking at it going, well, what's, what would be the right thing to do? And, and you know, frankly, uh, I think our uh, what we have agreed to. Well, it sounds to me like uh, actually like um – uh, one of you uh, has w one idea of what to do, and the other has another idea of what to do. And uh, how are you going to work that out? We already have, I think. How so? Uh, well, I think what, what we would like to do ultimately is find some government agency that we don't want to know who they are or anything, <laughs> sell, sell them the here's how to go do it, protect the country with it, uh, not get involved with secret clearances again and so forth. And, and just turn it over to them and say, hey. We, we recognize that we've taken it as far as we can that right. way, and, and you need somebody with um, to mature it. Yes. And frequently, I'm sure you'll recognize the person who discovers something is not necessarily the best one to do the maturation of it. Yeah, but still, you're just, I mean, you're both prepared to give this away, essentially. Yeah, more or less. More or less to the right individuals, right? I mean, it's good for the universe. It always comes back, Art. Uh, you know, I don't worry about that. Huh. I mean, well, we're, we're not even selling anything. I mean, that, to, to us, this is this is really uh, kind of like Orville and Wilbur did not set off to build a 727. You know, they they go, hey, let's make something fly. Well, we've kind of made this thing fly, we think, and we can we can describe. Uh, some of the basic aerodynamics of spirit. So this is why you've had no real recent bot runs, because you kind of came to the conclusion that you've gone as far as you can go with right. your with your resources. Here well, it was the resources that brought us to that conclusion, correct. If, if you were to sit down with a potential investor, could you convince him with the information you already have, just lay it out, lay, lay out the spreadsheets and... Make your case to the point where he throws money in the pot. Mm, probably, yeah, yeah. But but we would we would want to do it. I mean, if we were going to do it with a private investment group, it would be you know kind of like twenty five percent of the profit, uh, normal hedge fund terms. But that's not our concern. Our concern yeah. is kind of bigger than that because when you read the outputs, we got issues like terrorism and oh, yeah. how far does a dollar fall. No, I'm with you all the way. Look, I, we're out of program. You two have been absolutely fascinating. When, when, or if? Um, Listen, we are out of time. What's your oh, website? Okay. Give out your website. UrbanSurvival.com and Cliffs is HalfPastHuman.com. HalfPastHuman.com. Right. And I think we've probably got links to both. Gentlemen, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Thank you both. Thank you. Uh, what, uh, good, good night. What an absolutely fascinating interview. Wow. A uh, good place to be and a good place to end, I guess. Uh, from the high desert, I'm Art Bell, and here's Crystal with the outgoing words. Tonight in the desert, shooting stars across the sky. This magical journey will take us on a ride. Filled with belonging. For the truth, will we make it to tomorrow? Will the sun shine on you? Good night.